Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Berlakis, and this is case 228 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This case illustrates the rendezvous technique for retrograde crossing. Payson was a gentleman who presented with dyspnea on exertion. He had a cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 36%, viability in the LAD and the right coronary artery with a CTO of the right coronary artery, and he was turned down for surgery and referred for PCI. This is the diagnostic angiogram. We do have an occlusion of the circumflex. However, based on the MRI, this was not a viable territory. And we do have a CTO of the proximal right coronary artery with a distal vessel filling via contralateral collaterals. So this CTO has a blunt proximal cap, has all these little branches coming off at the proximal cap. The length uh, is hard to see, but uh, it's approximately uh, 30, 40 millimeters. There's good back filling of the right coronary artery. The distal vessel is diffusely diseased. And uh, there are some uh, epicardia collaterals, but also some septal collaterals going to the PDA. So our plan here was first try to start with undergrade wire escalation. And if that didn't work, try to go retrograde through septals. ADR was less favorable here because of the small, diffusely diseased distal vessel. Given the low ejection fraction, we routinely do right heart catheterizations. And in this case, uh, the patient was doing well. Wedge was 8 millimeters mercury. RA pressure was 1. Cardiac output was 5.7 with an index of 2.7. So we decided to perform the procedure without using hemodynamic support. We had a hard time understanding the proximal cap in part because there was dampening of the guide. And in cases like this, we often can get a better sense of the anatomy by inserting a microcatheter and doing a tip injection. So here with the tip injection, we can see that there are some small branches coming at the proximal cap, but there may be a tapered entry into the occlusion. So we did try with polymer jacketed wires, a filter XTA and a Gladius Mongo, but could not get through. So we switched to the retrograde approach, EBU guide. We do have a Caravel microcatheter. We used the SUO03 guide wire. And actually, the guide wire did cross, and now it's going down the PDA. We were confirmed that we were actually in the distal trulumen by doing an injection of the left. And the next step is to try to deliver the microcatheter all the way to the distal vessel. But unfortunately, we could not get the caravel, which is a low-profile microcatheter, but still could not be advanced distally. In cases like this, some of the first actions is to use a guide extension. We use a trap liner, and then we use a different microcatheter. We use a corset excess that can be torqued. And by doing this, um, we were able to advance the microcatheter all the way to the distal right coronary artery, and then advance the gladius mungo wire retrograde that went pro close to the proximal cap. So now we have very good clarification of where the proximal cap is by the retrograde wire. And we used an undergrade turnpike spiral with a Gaia next to guide wire. And the guide wire did seem to advance along the course of the vessel distally. So are we in the following the true lumen? We did a contralateral injection that seemed to be okay. And then we actually used a technique that is not very commonly used. It's only used in about 5% of retrograde cases, which is called the rendezvous. So we pulled back the retrograde wire. And then we advance the undergrade wire, which went right into the retrograde microcatheter. This is called the rendezvous technique. And then it does two things. One is it confirms that we're in the distal true lumen. And the second thing it does, now we have the wire go way up. And that uh, wire now can provide strong support for delivering undergrade equipment. But we did also use a guide extension on the undergrade guide catheter. At this point, the patient did develop severe hypotension. But uh, this uh, corrected after pulling the guide back. And this is one of those subtle but can be dramatic uh, events where the guide catheter can be leaning against the aortic valve, causing severe aortic regurgitation. So all we did is pull back the guide catheter, and then the hypotension immediately corrected. So when there's sudden onset of hypotension, and the guides 
are low on the cusps, on the aortic cusps. The easy way to check whether this is the problem is to just pull the guide back a little bit. And uh, if it is the guide causing aortic regurgitation, there should be immediate correction of the hypotension. We then used a dual Louis microcatheter to wire the PDA, that was the larger branch than the, last, than the right posterior lateral, and then placed stents all the way from the distal RCA to the proximal. We did keep the microcatheter in the collateral in case we had to do some bailout. We post dilated. But then we did have a nice result with Timothy flow into the PDA. There was some flow into the small posterior lateral. We decided to not do any more intervention there. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that using a retrograde wire can help resolve proximal cap ambiguity. So we were able to cross. Then we used a guide extension and a different microcatheter to get the microcatheter to the distal right. And then we inserted uh, a retrograde wire that went next to the proximal cap and from the target for the undergrade wire. And then we used the rendezvous technique. We were able to advance the undergrade guide wire into the retrograde microcatheter. And that confirmed the to lumen position and helped us deliver undergrade equipment and eventually succeed in the case. And uh, final and third lesson is that if there is sudden onset of hypotension when doing CTO or any PCI for that matter, one of the first things to exclude is that the guide catheter is not touching the aortic valve and potentially causing aortic regurgitation, as was the cause in our case. Thank you.